this demonstration, we are going to create a term set in the managed metadata service. We're going to do that using a console application that we'll write in C Sharp. First, we'll reference the site collection in SharePoint 2013. Then we'll reference the associated taxonomy session. And inside of the taxonomy session, we'll reference the uh, term store where we'll create our term group that will contain our term set and the associated terms. So let's go ahead and jump into Visual Studio and create our new console app. So in the new project window, we're going to choose the console application template from the C Sharp Windows template folder. And we'll call our console application create term set. We'll store our term set console application in the demo folder on the E drive. And the first thing that we're going to want to do in our console application project is make references to the SharePoint libraries. Now we'll need to make a reference to both the Microsoft SharePoint DLL as well as the Taxonomy DLL. So we want the local version. We'll go ahead and select that. So first we'll add a couple of using statements so we don't have to fully qualify our references to the Microsoft SharePoint namespace and the Microsoft SharePoint taxonomy namespace. And then we'll jump into our main method. Now in our main method we're going to create a couple of variables to hold the GUID for the term group and the term set that we'll create. So we'll create a GUID variable to hold our group GUID We'll set that equal to a new GUID. And the GUID we'll get by using the Create GUID tool here in Visual Studio. In registry format, we'll copy the GUID, we'll paste it in our string here, and get rid of the curly braces. And then because less typing means less typos, We'll just copy that, paste it in on the next line, and we'll call that term set GUID. Now, of course, we want to change that GUID, get a new unique GUID, and we'll paste that over again and get rid of the curly braces. So now we've got our two GUIDs to use for our term group and our term set. And then we'll get a reference to our site collection. And so we don't have to worry about disposal. We'll go ahead and add the reference to our site collection inside of a using block. We'll call our site collection variable site collection. We'll set that equal to a new instance of the SP site object that references uh, our HTTP dev.contoso.com site. And inside of our using block, we'll get a reference to our taxonomy session. And we'll call our taxonomy session variable taxonomy session. And we'll set it equal to a new instance of the taxonomy session class referencing the site collection variable that we just created. Now that we have a reference to the taxonomy session, we can reference the available term stores. So we'll create a term store collection variable. call it term stores and we'll set that equal to our taxonomy session term store collection property. Now before we try to access any of the term stores that are available we want to make sure that there is actually at least one term store available so we'll check and make sure that the term stores count property 
is at least greater than zero. As long as the count is greater than zero, that means we have at least one term store. And for this demonstration, uh, all we'll concern ourselves with is the first available term store. So we'll reference our term store as term store zero. And we'll call it store. So now that we have a reference to our first available term store, we can begin to create our term group. We'll call our term group hardware group. Just in case the application is already run, we'll attempt to reference an existing hardware group in a try block. If we aren't able to access the existing hardware group, it'll throw an argument out of range exception. So we'll catch that here. We'll attempt to set our hardware group equal to store dot groups and we'll attempt to reference the group with the group GUID that we created earlier. And if that group GUID doesn't exist, it'll throw our argument out of range exception, at which point we will simply create the group. So we'll set our hardware group variable equal to store dot create group. As I'm sure you can imagine, the group that we're going to create is a group called hardware that uses the group GUID that we created earlier. And now we can begin creating our term set. So we'll call our term set storage term set and we'll set that equal to hardware group dot create term set and of course we'll call our term set storage and it will use the term set GUID that we created earlier And now that we have our term set, we can create terms within the term set. So we'll go ahead and create a term in our storage term set using the create term method. And the first term that we'll create for our storage term set will be a 1 terabyte 5400 RPM SATA drive and we'll use the locale ID 1033 for US English and again because less typing means less typos we'll go ahead and copy that and paste it in there three more times where we can have a 1 terabyte 7200 RPM SATA drive and a 2 terabyte 5400 and a 2 terabyte 7200 RPM SATA drive. So now we've got our term set. Now something that we should probably do before we go and just create our term set, we should probably make sure that the term set reference did actually return a term set because it is possible that the term set doesn't exist even though the group does. So after getting a reference to our term set, We'll drop an if statement in here to check and see if storage term set is equal to null. And if storage term set is equal to null, then we'll create our term set. And 
with this variable declaration before our if statement, instead of creating the term set, we'll try to reference the term set the same way that we referenced the term group earlier. So we'll do store dot get term set instead of get term group and we'll try to get the storage term set using the term set ID we created earlier. And only if that term set is not available will we go and create our new storage term set. So now we can throw a little else statement in here that says if the term set isn't null, that must mean we ran this app already and we created the term set. So we can do a console.write line and say the storage term set already exists. And if it doesn't, then by all means, commit the changes. Store.commit all to commit all of the changes. And I suppose if we wanted to test this evaluation of the term store count being greater than zero, if we don't have any term stores, we might want to notify the user that there are no available term stores to create our term set in. So we can add another else statement and we'll say, console.write line and we'll notify the user that there are no term stores. Check that the managed meta data service is running. And just so the user has a chance to see all that information, we'll make sure to add a read key statement. So we'll white space first in the console.write line term set creator is finished any key to exit. And then we'll simply add a console.read key to have the application wait for a user to press a key before exiting. Now let's go ahead and run that. The error that we see here is because the default in a console application is to prefer 32-bit apps. And our SharePoint DLL, our SharePoint object reference, requires a 64-bit environment. So let's go and set our project properties by right-clicking on the project, choosing properties, and under the build tab, platform target, prefer 32-bit. We could uncheck that checkbox or we could simply target 64-bit platforms specifically. But just unchecking the checkbox is fine. Now our create term set application compiles and begins building our term sets. And now it's finished. We'll press any key to exit and then we'll go over to central administration and manage service applications and we'll look in the Managed Metadata Service application to verify that our hardware group did get created. And inside of the hardware group, we have a storage term set that contains our terms 1 terabyte hard drive 54 and 7200 RPM and 2 terabyte hard drive 54 and 7200 RPM. So in this demo, we created a console application that allows us to create a term store in the managed metadata service.